good morning, good afternoon, or good day, or whatever, where you are in, in the world. It's quite early in the morning for, for me here. So welcome to this session about two of my favorite things. We're going to combine Blazor and Gadgets. As developers, we go through a, a bunch of different stages, or at least I have done that. The first stage was when I was about seven years old and I got my first computer. I remember I sat down, I wrote 10, print, Jimmy, 20, go to 10. And that was my code. I wrote that code. I made the computer do things. And this was my first app. And it's actually available on GitHub, but we will get back to that at the end of the presentation. This was the moment when I realized that I wanted to become a developer. The next stage was when uh, calculators and phones came out. And it's a very special feeling to develop something for a device that you can carry with you. A device that has a small screen and, frankly, it's something else than something that you deploy on your computer, another device. Then came circuit boards, Raspberry Pi, Netduino, Arduino. I remember I ran to my wife and I said, Jessica, you got to ch check this out. Look, it blinks. And she was like, yeah, I can see it's blinking. No, 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 no you, you're not getting it. I made it. I wrote code. So this lead is blinking. This totally blew my mind. And then the next step when I realized that I can take control over other manufacturers' devices, get measurements from sensors, turn on and off lights. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How we can control devices using Blazor and the other way around, control Blazor using devices. There are a bunch of different web technologies like web Bluetooth, web HID, web USB, and even gamepad access, just to name a few. And today we're going to take a look at how we can use all of these technologies together with Blazor and gadgets. My name is Jim Engstrom. I'm the co-host of Coding Off the Work, a podcast and a stream. So if you want to know more, please check that out. I'm also the author of a book about Blazor. And as far as I know, this is the only book with raccoons on the cover. But enough about me. Let's dig a little bit deeper into everything. Now, I'm not a fan of JavaScript, but I do love gadgets. So I set out to create a Blazor library that will solve the JavaScript for you. But before we go into my framework, Blossom, we need to get a little bit more familiar with Bluetooth and how Bluetooth works. So I will start with an overview on how Bluetooth works. So what I love about Bluetooth Low Energy is that you can ask the device what it can do. That's perfect for developers. It's kind of a built-in documentation. So a Bluetooth Low Energy device can tell us what services it has. A service is identified by a grid. There is an organization called the Bluetooth SIG or the Special Interest Group that has defined it and named a bunch of services and also created documentation for all of them. There are also services that is not defined by the Bluetooth SIG, and we will take a look at those a little bit later. Each service has at least one characteristic. You can think of them as methods or events. For every characteristic has one or more ways to access them. For example, read, write, you can think of these as methods, and indicate or notify, which is, are a little bit more like events. So I found this scale on uh, Netonet is a Swedish store. It's an Anderson scale, kind of sounds Swedish as well. And it's actually Sensen who makes the scales. So I took the scale, I connected it to Edge, so you can use Edge with the Bluetooth internals, and you can check what services, what characteristics, what ways of access them it has. Now, I plug this into an application that I already done. So I got this back. So the Sensen scale has 
a generic, generic attribute. And that's the service that makes it possible for us to ask everything, to co communicate with it, basically. We all, it also has a device information containing device uh, name, manufacturer, and, and so on. We also have generic ask, access, which contains device um, information about the device, like name and address. And then we have this last one. One that is not defined by the Bluetooth SIG. So I know that I'm not going to get measurements from the th first three. So hmm, maybe it's this one. Probably this one. The one is, that is named 000FFB0. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go through all of the numbers. It's actually only, often only the first numbers that differs. The rest of them are usually the same. So let's dig a little bit deeper into that service. So Edge told me that it has two characteristics. And it also has two ways of accessing those characteristics. Great. So I hooked up an application. Getting back whatever I was getting back. I put something on the scale and I got 10 bytes back. And this is kind of the most fun part, to figure out what is going on when it comes to the numbers that I know nothing about. So the baseline, zero grams, nothing on the scale. That's zero ounces for the US viewers. So looking at the data, I'm going to assume that zero grams is going to be represented by zero. So I could ignore all the other numbers for now. Now, I had an energy drink just beside me, and I put it on a scale, which just happens to weigh 235 grams. And now, a couple of values changed. And I have 235 on byte 5. That's what, 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 what I was looking for. So awesome. That's about 8 ounces. Okay, so I reset the scale. Remove the energy drink. So now I have minus 235. So byte 5 still says 235. But byte 7 says 1. And byte 9 actually changed as well. But I kind of felt lucky. So I was thinking that if there was a byte for sign, it's probably not going to say 140 if it's 0 or, or a negative. So I was assuming that byte 7 just might be the sign byte. Now I put 120 grams on the scale and suddenly byte 4 changed. So after testing different ways back and forward, I realized that the interesting bytes are 4, 5 and 7. So what I came up with was that if I take byte 4 times 256 plus byte 5 and then used byte 7, for negative or positive, that would give me the result I was looking for. So let's take a look at a demo, see the scale in action. So here we have Visual Studio. So I have already included my Nougat package. So I also need to include my, my namespace and it's blossom.bluetooth. So in JavaScript, there's something called a Bluetooth navigator. And I named it the same way in my library. So I want to bring in a Bluetooth navigator. So I'm going to inject the Bluetooth navigator from my library. And I'm going to call it navigator, like that. Then we need a variable to hold the scale data. So since this is coming out as grams, an int is going to be just fine because there's nothing smaller than grams in the in the eyes of this scale. So I'm going to say int weight, and it's going to be zero. And I want to show the weight as well. So when, it, when it's um, changing, I'm going to show weight right there. Nice. So now it's time to start coding. And we need a way to access the, um, the service and the 
characteristic. So I'm just going to bring in those lines of code. So we have the service, which is represented by the grid. I'm going to bring in the characteristic, same thing there, represented by a grid. And then we need to add a filter. So I'm going to tell the JavaScript, in this case, or the web browser, what kind of devices I want it to show me. So I'm going to create a new request device query. And I'm going to add a filter to that that simply filters on services. So I'm going to say that I want to show all the devices that has this particular service. Awesome. So now it's time to request the device. So I'm just going to get a device back. I'm going to wait the navigator.requestDevice async. I'm going to send in that query or that filter. So when I put something on the scale, I want it to notify me. So let's, um, let's bring in our device. I want to set up notification async. So this is going to make sure that I'm going to get notifications back. I'm going to send in the service ID and the characteristics ID. So this will enable me to get notifications back. And I want to listen to that those notifications by adding a um, event listener. And we will just bring in that event listener here as well. So we're doing the exact same thing that I talked about. We're taking the value that we're getting from the scale. We are multiplying byte 4 with 256, adding byte 5, and whether or not byte 7 is 1 or 0, we're going to get back, uh, we're going to set it as minus or, or uh, keep it as positive. We're going to run this. Here we go. So now I can bring in my Bluetooth scale. I'm gonna start it up. And now I can press connect. I will get any time now. It's only gonna show me, there we go, Sanson food. I'm gonna click that one and I'm gonna pair it. So now when I touch the scale, you'll see that the value changes in pretty much real time in the web browser. I think this is so cool. It's, it's, um, it's amazing what you can do, really. So my next nebo is going to be with my trusty friend, RoboSapien, over here. So I'm going to bring him in. And I'm going to move these others out of the way. So let's take a look at the code for the RoboSapien. I'm going to pop into the code, bring up RoboSapien. So we're doing basically the same thing here. We are getting a GUID. We are getting a quick characteristic, a GUID for the characteristics. We're creating a request device query. But in this case, we're using the name instead. And we have optional services. So I need to specify the services that I want to access. I'm requesting the device and simply writing navigator.write value async, sending in the ID, the service ID, the characteristics, and the bytes that I want to execute. So I'm going to wake him up here. So I'm going to bring in my code here, and let's connect to our RoboSapien. There we go. We are connected. 
So now we can start click buttons and he will move his arms when I do that. And since I have a humor of a four-year-old, I can also make him. That's disgusting. Yeah. Okay, so let's pop back. I also have um, other robots, like this one, for example. And it's a little bit hard to show you on stream, but I recorded a video that is behind my name there. But you see, you see, you can control the robot here. And all the sample code for this is in the GitHub repo. So you can, if you have one of these robots, you can check that out. So I started a new project because I wanted to see if what's possible for me to communicate with even more devices. So I started off using HID, so human interaction devices. And I wanted to see if it was possible to do kind of the same thing. So let's dig in into a demo of that. I'm going to close the web browser here and pop up the next one here. So I have the busy light. And you will recognize a lot of the code here. It looks kind of similar. I'm not going to type everything out. We we'll already have it in the project. I'm creating a hid navigator instead. One difference with the hid is that you can you can list the devices that you have currently connected. Um, and I'm, I'm talking about the, the the items that you already paired with the web browser. That you can't do that with Bluetooth. You, uh, we can connect to a device. We have a we, we show the list of the devices. If I have a device, I would show an input uh, text uh, or an input um, control binding with a color. So I'm going to get back a color, and I have a method called change color. Same thing here. We are creating a, a list uh, of of device filters we are um, when we connect we add a bunch of uh, filters we are filtering on vendor id in this case we're creating a hid device request options kind of looks the same we're requesting a device and we're opening the device when it comes to sending it's the same thing we're sending bytes to the device but this device is really advanced. It has like eight different commands and you can go, you can jump between commands and it's, it's super, um, super advanced. So it's actually 64 bytes I need to send to the device. You, you see the code here, I'm getting the RGB values and I'm not gonna go into depth. This is also on the GitHub repo, so you can check that out. So let's, um, let's run it, see what happens. So I'm going to go to my busy light. I will connect. I will connect to the busy light and I will pop over to my cam. You see the busy light just beneath the scale. Let's turn it red. And I click the change color and it turns red. Let's try blue. And I change the color, pop blue. So imagine you have a communication application like in Teams or Skype or whatever it may be on the web. And you want the light to change when you are busy or not. So you can do that using these technologies. I also have a demo here where we can connect to a Stream Deck. So I'm going to move over my Stream Deck into the camera view here. There we go. So now I can connect to my Stream Deck. There we go. I can reset it. And now when I press buttons here, you'll see that the UI changes as well, in more or less real time. So the really cool thing here is that you can use 
these technologies for, let's say we're we streaming today using StreamYard. You can use StreamYard to get all of these. Um, you, you could get a Stream Deck template from StreamYard, for example. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm soon I'm done. The RoboSapien just uh, went back to sleep. We did show a demo of that one. Uh, and the last demo I want to show you is something that I've not written. It's toolbelt.blazer.gamepad. So we can connect gamepads like these to Blazer. So I'm going to open up website here. I'm going to start my... Um, my gamepad. So I mentioned my ZX Spectrum, and um, I, when I became a developer, I wanted to see what, if it was possible for me to create a ZX Spectrum emulator. And it became kind of my hello world, the thing that I test everything with. So I wanted to see, is it possible to run a ZX Spectrum using Blazor WebAssembly and why not communicate with the gadgets as well? So I'm simply going to run a game here. This is Manic Miner. And if I press the gamepad, I can simply control the character using my gamepad. So now we are controlling Blazor with the gamepad. So here are some of the links I've talked about today. If you want to uh, dig deeper into um, to all of that. So let's build something cool that communicates with gadgets. And please reach out to me if, with what you're building. Because I'm really interested in see, to see what you're, you're doing. So thank you so much for listening. I believe we have a couple of minutes. Do we have any questions? Okay, Jimmy. That was an amazing demo. I'm totally blown away thank you uh, i mean what a great time to be a dotnet developer right mm -hmm. from iot's to wasms and um, not able to write javascript but just c sharp and just to get all to do all these things in a browser it's amazing yeah